Hey guys, what's up? It's time for another damage control video. Uh, content this time might be a little scarce, but uh, I'm drinking like four, four hour old coffee that I reheated from this morning, and uh, I have run out of fucks to give, so I'm just gonna go with it. Uh, first things first, I'm gonna go over the latest news. Uh, according to NBC News, Conversion Therapy Crusader has something to say. He's gay. So, not a shocker. Basically, <laughs> Anyone I've ever known to be anti-gay or the head of any sort of conversion therapy has come out has come out as gay themselves, and that is exactly what has happened here. So, uh, Spartanburg SC, a South Carolina man who founded one of the nation's nation's biggest conversion therapy ministries, has something to say. He is gay. McCray came out of the closet this summer, nearly two years after he was fired from the faith-based conversion therapy program. He's now trying to come to terms with the harm he inflicted when he was advocating for religious efforts to change a person's sexuality. Conversion therapy is not just a lie, but it's very harmful, Game told The Post and The Courier, because it's false advertising. Uh, so, well, welcome uh, to... Uh, the dark side. <laughs> we all know that conversion therapy doesn't work. We all know that it's very harmful and damaging. Um, so, you know, another one bites the dust there. I'm sure that my next subject is thrilled with this news. Uh, so, I'm just gonna take a cheap shot today because it's easy and my brain is full of anxiety. So, uh, we're going back to Activist Mommy, and basically I'm just going to troll through her Twitter for a little bit uh, because it's kind of hilarious, and sometimes I feel like it's a parody account. Like, she's so just ignorant, I feel like it can't be real. But apparently, it is real, and the sad part is that people still support this or believe what she says. Uh, I can't take her seriously, even just for the name Activist Mommy. She does have 10 kids, like it says right here on her Twitter. It's devoted wife and mom of 10 kids. Jesus is my best friend. 70 million video views, author of Not On My Watch. Those are very contrasting things to have like in your Twitter, Twitter bio. 10 kids, Jesus is my best friend, and I have 70 million video views. Awesome. <laughs> Who puts that in their bio? And I, I don't think that's actually accurate because from the last time I checked, she had about 7,000 subscribers on YouTube and it's just, anyone who watches her videos does so for the humor factor of how stupid she actually is. You know, maybe this is why Muslims are so angry. Oh! So first things first, scrolling through her Twitter, we have her first tweet, what ca it caught my attention the other day. Men can never become women. Men can never become women. Men can never become women. And you know, th that wasn't enough. She had to say it a total of six times. Um, then she hashtag DNA, truth, science, never bow, gender appropriation. And who else besides Jessica Yaniv, could she use uh, for her her, uh, her campaign? So, believe it or not, Jessica Yaniv has become the poster child for conservatives around the world. Her face is now basically the people, the reason that men can never be women or that, you know, trans women aren't real and that it just can't be a thing because Jessica Yaniv is this pedophile who has not appropriated gender, but appropriated the trans community. And uh, that's the real honest truth. And why is it that Christians don't give a flying fuck about science until it comes down to our chromosomes and DNA? I've never known anyone so concerned with truth and science in the Christian community up until the DNA. Uh, she even has some other tweets further down concerning DNA. But this one in particular, she says, This is the reason I will never bow down to the politically correct trans agenda. Hashtag DNA, facts, science, misogyny, never bow down. I will follow every single person who retweets this important truth. Stronger together. Uh, so, you know, actually, the whole DNA 
uh, argument or approach might not be an actual argument forever. I came across a TED talk today and the title of it is, Can We Cure Genetic Diseases by Rewriting DNA? So, rewriting DNA. They always say we can't change DNA, but here we are working on rewriting DNA. Of course, you know, in this particular TED Talk, they're talking about genetic diseases, you know, like progeria and things like that. Uh, things that are very important and need cures that can only be cured with uh, rewriting of DNA in the way that they explain it. I'll link that video down below. It's actually really interesting. But <laughs> the point is we actually, I don't know that much about DNA. Activist Mommy obviously does not know that much about DNA, but there are scientists out there who know a good amount about DNA. And what if, just what if, the possibility became that we could change our, our DNA? Like, that would be the biggest way to troll. <laughs> like, what arguments would they have against trans people anymore? There would be absolutely none. It, like, what if being trans was no longer a mental illness to them, but what if it was a genetic disorder that could be uh, fixed with medicine? How fucking awesome would that be? Maybe dreaming, but uh, just, you know, worth thinking about and saying, yo, we're rewriting DNA as you speak. This argument you're using is not gonna work forever. Maybe you should think of something else besides being a complete bigot, you know? <laughs> Trans people are not doing anything to you or affecting you negatively in any way, shape, or form. You're just grasping on to some kind of like little comfort bubble that no longer exists. Uh, so, uh, moving on to more when it comes to her Twitter. Basically, all she's doing is bitching about Drag Queen Story Hour and her account not being verified or able to advertise because, let's see, she says, my tweets contain nothing graphic, no nudity, no profanity, and yet Twitter has blocked me from advertising and getting my pro-life, pro-family message to the public. Here's the thing. There's a lot of people, there's a lot of conservative Christians or conservative people that are definitely not for trans issues. They are not supportive of the trans community whatsoever. Uh, Candace Owens, for example, like she brings it up almost everything she talks about has to do with picking your, she's always like, pick your gender. I'm not gonna let my kid pick my gender. That their child is picking their gender. Uh, first of all, if I could pick my gender, I would have picked to be a woman because it would have been a lot easier to not have surgery and hormones and deal with people like you every day saying that we just pick our gender uh, or tell us we don't exist or tell us that we're mentally ill, etc., etc., etc. But uh, I digress. Candace Owens on, you know, other topics at least seems somewhat uh, like someone's home, like she's actually educated or can actually do some research, which she should do some more. Uh, when it pertains to being trans, I think that would be lovely. Uh, but it's obviously not where she's wanting to put her energy at the time. But when it comes to activist mommy, <laughs> like, it just makes me, like, every post I feel like can't be real. Like, it makes me laugh. Um, so she just, you know, gives me a good laugh each day. But, uh, yeah, I think that's about all I have to really say, you know, She's, I'm sure I'll do more on her just because it's easy and she's obsessed with uh, Drag Queen Story Hour, which, uh, you know, drag queens are not actually trans. I think that she's confused and thinking that her fighting against getting Drag Queen Story Hour can canceled or removed from library, excuse me, libraries is fighting the good fight against the trans movement or etc um but honestly it i wouldn't say that it affected our community negatively in any way shape or form of her like making it so they you know drag queen story hour is canceled or whatever uh the point of drag queen story hour is basically to teach kids that they shouldn't be afraid to be themselves and diversity and so on um I feel like there's still a lot of other ways that we can teach kids diversity and uh, tolerance and acceptance of other people. 
it essentially all starts within the home and the family. Uh, kids don't discriminate. They learn, it's a learned thing. So, uh, you know, it should all start in the home. Like there's people like activist mommy that uh, teach her kids to discriminate and to not tolerate people that are different. Uh, so it is kind of nice to have like an outside source of, you know, teaching that. But I think in the age group that they're aiming Drag Queen Story Hour, it's a bit young, but also I feel like there's better ways to do it. I find drag queens to be amazing. It's a performance art. I have nothing against them. Uh, I just think of myself like in the age group that the that story, Drag Queen Story Hour takes place, like maybe I, I just you know, a fraidy cat, but they, they're kind of like, <laughs> they're a little scary. Uh, in, in that, if I was, you know, thinking of seeing drag queens as, as a child, um, it's just like a lot of makeup and it's bright and it's very, very loud. Um, but maybe that's just me. But I feel like there are other ways that we could do it. So let's say like drag queen story hour was just forever canceled. Uh, I'm sure we could, you know, figure out other ways to uh, teach tolerance and acceptance in all of those things. Things. So, um, whatever activist mommy, like whatever floats your boat, whatever fills your time, whatever makes you feel better about yourself and your 70 million video views, I hope you find peace in your life because you are one angry activist mommy. <laughs> Anyways, that is it for today. That wasn't exactly like a damage control video, but that's all I got, I guess. But uh, yeah, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, leave them down below and peace out. I will see you next time.